So we saw literally <laughs> first inning of the game. Uh, I think it was Glaber Torres hit a foul ball down the right field line. Yeah. Mookie bets, skies up. Mookie being Mookie and such a good athlete. Catches a ball before it goes foul. And you saw there happen to be something. And you're like, all right, whoa. And Mookie was pissed. There was fan interference. It was called out. They show yeah. the replay, man. He's catching the ball. These fans grab onto his glove. Two Yankees fans literally rip the ball out of the glove. I was watching this, Jemai, and I was blown away because that angle Mookie was at, he could have, like, his wrist could have been broken. Yeah. And I looked at it, too. And look, I'm a native New Jerseyer. New York fans are, are a different breed. Boston fans, Philly fans, different <laughs> breed. But that's crossing the line. You don't touch anyone that way, let alone an athlete that's just trying to make a play. Then we find out the Yankees were going to allow them back for game five because they're season ticket holders. And Major League Baseball went, no, they're banned. Yeah. You're not letting them the game. these guys. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the Yankees were on board with it. What did what was going through your mind when you saw that unfold, man? I mean, my jaw dropped, dude. Right? I'm like, I've never seen a situation like this happen before of watching professional baseball, watching baseball at any level, seeing this, t this level of fan interference. Right? It, made me back, it made me go back to think about Bartman from the Cubs and like, you know, accidental, mm -hmm. you know, where oh, it's like yeah. inadvertently you're going after a ball, but a dude actually grabbing his hand, kind of bending his arm where he was like, you know, like a little bit. It's like he could have been injured. Yeah. It was assault is basically what I saw. And, uh, you know, obviously Mookie was here with the Red Sox for four seasons that I covered him left after the 2019 season. Yeah. And he's a very nice guy, very mellow, really not much emotion unless, you know, there's a big player situation like that. Yeah. But this is the most angry I have ever seen him mm -hmm. ever in my interactions with him or knowing him over the last several years. So um, this was one of those things. I thought it was about to just fire up the Dodgers and ignite them. But uh, right. this was crazy. And dude was living in his 15 minutes of fame. I think uh, I think Jorge Castillo from ESPN wrote a feature on him or one of those guys uh, caught up with them at a bar afterwards and. This dude, he was nuts, man. I couldn't believe he did what he did. It's yeah. like, all right, he already caught the ball. This is going to be fan interference. It's like, what do you think? There's not a million cameras in the ballpark. This is the World Series. This is right. not some spring training game. What are we doing? And he said something like, you know, this is we're we're gonna help out on defense if the ball comes. Yeah, our we're gonna way. D up, right, right. <laughs> like, and you know what? To to an extent. I understand the fan interference of like, hey, this is important for us not to have an out. Yeah. Let me reach up and let me mess Mookie up and yeah. let me get away with it. But and that I can see that. His, yeah, and that ball's in his glove. He grabbed onto his arm. His other buddy was doing <laughs> something too and literally ripped the ball out. Yeah. It was an angle he was at, man. Like Mookie could have got injured. And again, I go yeah. back to you don't touch anyone the way they were touching Mookie Betts. If he's yeah, a baseball man. player, if you're out at a bar with your boys, if you're walking down the sidewalk, and it always goes that line of... You wouldn't, like the same of what fans say to players, you wouldn't talk to someone that way if you were walking <laughs> past each other on the sidewalk. But just because they're an athlete, obviously they have more to lose than you, and you have this wall up between them, you don't, that's why you think you could say that? Because of all this going on, they think that justified the way they touched another person, let alone it being in the world. Nah, man, like, you miss me with that. And it was polarizing on the timeline, and people were like, oh, you know, New York, I love it. And people were like, typical New Yorkers. <laughs> the one that got me was like, Someone tweeted something, like you said, never seen anything like that. Couldn't believe it. Agreed. Mm. Then at the end, they go, it's embarrassing for all New Yorkers. Stop. Like, miss <laughs> me with that. If that happened in Fenway, would I be like, that's embarrassing for all Boston? No, I wouldn't. Because I never knew those guys existed until that moment happened. I'll yeah. never hear about them again. I will never meet them. I have nothing to do with them. Embarrassing for all New Yorkers. Like, bro, get out of here. That is the worst I've seen of any New York sports fan or sports fan period. Like, embarrassing for all New Yorkers. Like, miss me with that. It's low-hanging fruit. It's a Yankees fan. It's low-hanging fruit. It's a Philly or Boston fan. Get get out of here with that, though. Embarrassing for all New Yorkers. Miss me with that, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, I uh, I feel you on that. I feel you. That was like a personal affront to you and all those folks. Yeah. Yeah. from the area but uh from the outside looking in it's pretty hilarious and i saw some of those tweets and a lot of people chiming into this conversation but it feels like those two guys i think if you think about a um an exaggeration for a yankees fan yeah like these two guys would be in the dictionary next to that about what you would perceive them to be i think yeah. that was a funny part because it was like typical yankees fan like this is what they look like this is kind of how they operate and um, 
certainly not helping the cause because these are the same people, not these guys in particular, potentially. Yeah. But uh, these are the same people, same fan base that was booing Shohei or, or cheering Shohei when he injured he his shoulder. Injured. So yeah. they, they got a bad they got a bad rap going on right now and, and haven't kept it classy. But uh, that took the cake. Wild situation. And um, wow. that fan interference, man, that was crazy. I don't know yeah. what he thought was going to happen. Right? Like you thought they were going to keep the seats. They had to be handcuffed when they were escorted out of the stadium. Like, like again, if I did a fan interference and not even to that level, and they're throwing me out, I'd be like, you know what? I get it. Like, I get it. I, I did. I did. You literally can't do that. You get thrown out for less. Like, all right, cool. I'll walk out. Like, they had to be handcuffed. And the fact yeah. that the Yankees were going to let them attend game five because they're season ticket holders. And then MLB was like, nope, they're banned. And then all of a sudden, they're in full agreement. Like, the, the New York Yankees, you can't have beards if you're playing on the team. But if you're doing that, to a player in the stadium, they're like, yeah, you're cool. Come on in. Like, <laughs> and, and it overshadowed what got me, what was in the objectivity of watching sports, an amazing night for Anthony Volpe, where he grew up a Yankees fan. His dad was a psycho that would call to WFAN, the biggest sports radio show in New York, <laughs> yelling about the Yankees, yelling for guys to get fired. He's not even 24. He hits that grand slam when he's been lost all World Series long. They're chanting his name. He gets interviewed by Derek Jeter after like dreams on dreams on yeah. dreams. But everyone's talking about these two guys after. And they're talking about how poorly the Yankees handled it. That's where it got me to, man. It, it, it was a cool game. It extends a World Series. You love to see it. A huge moment for Volpe in the Bronx. And it's this has been the talk. It, that's why, man. It, it sucks. I'm happy there's another game of the World Series, though. And I'm happy that those guys aren't allowed <laughs> back in that building. Yeah, they stole his moment for sure. And yeah. uh, you mentioned the Volpe situation. I mean, anybody, regardless of, you know, who you're cheering for in this World Series can appreciate kind of what that probably meant for a kid like him growing up in the area, rooting for this team, being at that uh, 2009 World Series championship parade. They keep showing that clip mm -hmm. or that video or that picture of him there. He's like and to be able old. to do what he did. Yeah, it's just it's kind of crazy full circle moment for him. And uh, this is what to steal a phrase from Carl Anthony Towns. This is what dreams is made of. This is what <laughs> dreams is made of. So that was pretty cool, man. I'm just, I'm happy for Anthony Volpe, but uh gentleman sweep happening. feel like that's oh. going to end it tonight. We'll see. I like it. As of recording this pod, there hasn't been a final in game five yet, but I see your call. Good cat impersonation too. You kind of got 